welcome to you here and welcome to you online on the holy interwebs. It's good to be together. So who here comes from a mother? <laughs> well, happy Mother's Day to those mothers and then to you and then to all of us who mother in different ways. It is all important. It is all to be celebrated. And then there's the reality um, of what Pat, um, you, you, you read that little poem, and it said, mothers who loved us and mothers who tried. So it's Alpha and Omega, and it is that way all the time. Um, <clears throat> who here has seen or read the book? And I know the book is called, a man called maybe Owi or Ovi, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I saw the movie, which is called A Man Called Otto. Who here has seen the movie? Did you like it? Yeah? I liked it. It was very interesting. If you've not seen it, I recommend it. It's a good movie, and it's Tom Hanks, so, you know, he does a fine job always. Um, so, Otto is a very um, one-dimensional guy in the beginning. He is uh, grumpy, grouchy, and um, methodical. He has a routine, and nothing must upset his routine. And he knows right from wrong. And he is not shy to express his opinion. Um, and there are all these dumb people around him, and he lets them know what he thinks about them because he knows what's right, he knows what's wrong, and dumb people do the wrong things. And uh, <clears throat> so, of course, it starts out, it's a little bit one-dimensional, and then as the movie goes on, or I'm sure the book develops, then... Something else com comes forth, and um, I also should tell you that um, his wife died, so he's grieving, and he wants to commit suicide because this world is no good without his wife in it. And you get the impression that the wife was the one who brought the emotional aspect to the relationship and the emotional intelligence to the relationship. And... Otto just did the right and the wrong, and it was probably the wife who grounded him and uh, helped him have a sense of purpose. And now with the wife gone, he has no purpose anymore. Um, there's no emotional depth. Um, life is not worth living. And um, <clears throat> so... Here's what I want to talk to you about today. Because the, the title of my talk is Hindsight 2020. Is it true that hindsight is always 2020? Um, and that's what I want to look at. Um, <clears throat> I think my superpower is that usually I can distill very complex things and present them in a very simple way. And I don't think I'll be able to do that today, but I'll try, okay? Um, <clears throat> because I'm going to talk about the brain and about the two spheres, the left and the right. And um, you know there are these notions um, I'm sure many of you have heard about this, that the left brain is the thinker, the right brain is the feeler. So artists would be more right brain oriented and maybe mathematicians, physicians would be left brain oriented. And um, so according to new studies, that is not entirely true. That's not entirely true how these two spheres work. Um, they each have a purpose. And the left brain would be Otto in the beginning. 
So the left brain, in fact, is very superficial, um, shallow, and it knows right from wrong. Okay, so let me, let me rephrase that. It thinks, it knows what's right and what's wrong. But the one thing that is true for the left sphere, that it is always right. Okay? So whatever it thinks it knows, it's the truth. Now, it, is all, it also used to be believed that the left brain does not do emotions, does not do feelings. And it turns out that's also not true. In fact, it does two feelings and it does them really, really well. Anger and disgust. Um, shallow, pretty one-dimensional, utilitarian, very utilitarian. It's important because you need that in order to survive, right? You have to know what food will kill you, what food will nurture you. Left brain, left sphere, takes care of that. Um, it can sense and deal with dangers. Left brain will do that. But life governed by a left brain world is um, bleak at best. So if somebody has a stroke, and it affects the right sphere. And you're left with just the left sphere. It's a horrible way to live. Because the left brain is always right. So it often happens that people who have a stroke and their arms or their legs are not moving on the right side. And then you tell them that you know, this is not moving, you got to work it, they would deny it. They say, no, that's not my arm. Doctor, that's your arm. That's your leg. It's not mine. And you can't convince them otherwise because the left sphere is always right. Emotions governed by the left sphere are anger and disgust. Utilitarian, shallow, simple-minded thinking, black and white, right sphere. Right sphere grasps and seeks the mystery. Right sphere is aware of the transcendent wishes to tap into it, curious about it. Right sphere, great variety of emotions, depth, need for beauty. It's that thing, you listen to a song or a piece of music and tears are rolling down your cheek. That's right sphere. Inexplicable. So far, and you know, science has progressed quite a bit. And left sphere would have us believe, would have us believe that we can explain everything with science and through science. But how do you explain that tear that's rolling down your feet, your cheeks? When you listen to a beautiful piece of music or you're present to a piece of art or the rainbow, or an incredible sunset. Science has not been able to touch that, nor am I certain that it ever will. It's the mystery. Now, of course, both are best balanced, right? There is a reason we have these two spheres. There is a reason they each govern different aspects of life because both aspects of life are necessary for us to live a balanced life. Now, just 
Just think about our world today. <laughs> Which sphere do you think it is most governed by? See, when I think about it, I get the impression or the sense that it's heavily tilted towards the left sphere. And then, of course, our sense of belonging, our need for belonging, is not met. Because the left sphere just can't do that. It's not equipped for that. That's why Otto decided to kill himself. Because he no longer felt that he belonged in this world once his wife died. Look at the political discourse. I told you that the left sphere is capable of feelings. It is anger and disgust. Is our political discourse filled with anger and disgust? Absolutely. Are we quick to say this is right, that is wrong? Look, um, when you ban books, and please remember that people lost lives, limbs, freedom, to fight for the freedom of speech, yes? That's what our ancestors had done, because they knew the difference between having freedom of speech and not having freedom of speech. And now, with this left sphere, we are saying that we're curtailing freedom of speech. We're banning books because we know and we know that it's right to do it. We also know it's right that trans people should be discriminated against. Well, it's not us you use, but there's, there's, there's a large part of the population who, who believes that, who knows that, and they know that they are right because that's what this does. Um, gargoyles. Now, how many of you have traveled around the world? Yeah? So, I do remember when I first came to this country, my impression was, and I, I come from Europe, right? And um, I, when I first came to this country, I will have you know that um, most of American towns don't strike me as beautiful, okay? They're very utilitarian. So, of course, it's a building, it does a job, but there's no really overarching vision. Like, drive down Westnich, do you really see a vision <laughs> that there was somebody who designed it with, with, with great care and that there should be harmony between the buildings. And that's true for most American cities that I have been to. I've been to many. Now, when you go to Europe, it's different. You can tell that there's been an overarching vision. Gargoyles. What purpose do they have? Nothing other than it allows an expression of the mystery that lives within. It adds a sense of beauty, a sense of mystery, a little bit of curiosity, like what could a gargoyle be about? They look funny, they look weird. But it's not utilitarian. It is totally right sphere. And then when you walk down these streets in Europe, um, it's beautiful. It's like you're amazed and, and, and you will just Look at things, they have absolutely no purpose other than dazzle the senses. And that's important, dazzling the senses. Left sphere is utilitarian, 
right sphere dazzles the senses. It's present to the mystery, to the wonder of the world. So, hindsight 2020. Um, and it is Mother's Day. And there's one more thing I will bring to you. Yesterday we had this memorial service, and John died. And John had two children, and his daughter um, gave a talk. And she said this. <clears throat> when she was a child, her father, with John, would come home right around 6 p.m. from work. And he was very predictable. And before um, he arrived home, Bev, the wife, would put lipstick on, and she would sit in the window and wait for him great anticipation and delight. He is coming home. Now, there are also children who, when their parents are coming home and they know it's time, they're trying to figure out how to blend into the furniture or the background so the parents wouldn't notice them. That's safe. Being noticed is not safe. So, would you think that a child based on this, these different experiences, they'd be defined for life? Yes. And then if you have this, the positive experience or the negative experience, do you think it would impact how you look at the world? What you think of the world? Whether the world is a safe, beautiful place or it's a dangerous place? You're suspicious. You can't trust. Over here, there's a lot of trust. Over here, there's little to no trust. And then both these parents are going to have children. And then they will parent from within. And the only thing they can give is what's within. If there's a lot of trust. That's what they pass on. That's, that's where they parent from. If there's that fear, that's where they parent from. So it's important for us to look back and take an honest, kind, loving look at our parents to understand what were they governed by as they were parenting. This, that, fear, trust, and then assess it honestly. Because often we are so loyal to our parents that we're not willing to acknowledge their shortcomings. That we wish to see them just larger than life, better than maybe they were. And it's not because they were bad people. We're all innocent. Whatever we do, we do it innocently. We don't wish to harm. We just do because we don't know better. So, hindsight 2020, you need to understand that the only way you can assess anything is determined by your upbringing. It is determined by how your, the people around you in your most formative years were governed more by this, by that, or was it balanced? This will all matter. So we can't look at life and see it for what it is. We can only see it for who we are. So, what is the hope then? How can we possibly break the cycle? If we are in a cycle that is not constructive, that is not healthy, that is not balanced, how do we break the cycle? And the one way I know is to question everything and question all the time. Now, I believe that there is a truth out there. 
In fact, Unitarian Universalists believe that too. We just don't always know what it is. So it behooves us to constantly question. And do not fall for the allure of simplicity. The left sphere would have us believe that there are simple solutions, quick solutions, black and white solutions. Life is complex. Life is complicated and complex. With simplicity, we will always find missed solutions, wrong solutions, because life is complex. So by questioning everything all the time, we give both spheres a chance. And then wonder might emerge. And then the possibility of a miracle can happen and a miracle, I define it by changing one's mind. That's a miracle right there. To ever change your opinion from this to that, that's a miracle. And it can only happen if we are committed to question, and especially when we feel really certain, really, really certain that we know that we're right. That's the best time to be, begin questioning. And then be open to communication, but not dogmatic communication, but curious communication. And this, of course, is most important for those of us. Um, it's for all of us, but for those of us who have had who come from dysfunctional families, it's even more important because it is time to break the cycle. And just because we're looking back on things from here and we believe, the left sphere would have us believe that hindsight is always 2020, it isn't. It depends greatly on our upbringing, on our background, whether we were influenced more by this or by that. And our goal is to bring it to center, to balance it. So we experience the wonder. We can be utilitarian when that's needed. And otherwise, we seek the mystery. We live into the mystery. And I, we have to, we have to find a way to impact society, to bring it back from this left sphere, to bring it back, and we can best do it by raising children whom we teach to think for themselves, to question, be comfortable with questioning, be comfortable with doubts, who don't need to be dogmatic, who can be curious and open-minded, balance them out. So, happy Mother's Day to you who are raising children, who have raised children, and seek balance, seek this and that. Live in the question, live in the mystery, and let it be. And so it is.